national voice in defense of your Second Amendment rights. Gun Talk, available on iTunes and on the free Gun Dealio smartphone app for Android and iPhone. To be on the air with Tom, call us now, 866-825-5486 or 1-TOM-TALK-GUN. Now, here's Tom. And we're back. Tom Gresham here. Uh, our number is 866-TALK-GUN. Just dial Tom Talk, Talk Gun. It's easier. Tom Talk Gun. Question. Throw this out for you. It's just one of these fun things. This is called spending Tom's money. <laughs> if I hand you $1,000 and I say, go buy a gun, how are you going to spend it? What are you going to buy? Could be one gun. Could be... S- more than one gun could be gun and other stuff, but you got to spend it on gun stuff, shooting related gear, thousand bucks. What something when I said that something popped into your mind, you went, Oh, then I could get okay. What is that thing that you could get? You got a thousand bucks of Tom's pretend money to spend on guns or gun stuff. What are you going to get? 866-TALK-GUN or just dial Tom Talk Gun. Scott's in Tulsa, Oklahoma on three. He bought a gun. Hey, Scott, what'd you get? Hey, Tom. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah, I did buy a gun. Thanks for taking my call. You uh, bet. Well, what it is, it's, uh, it's a thirty out 6 but it's Santa Fe Deluxe. It's a Mauser MK1 by Golden State Arms Company. I guess they imported it. Or- okay. And and I just don't know a lot about it. And really, what I was wanting to know is, I yeah, I got it from my nephew, and I I went and gave him nine hundred for it. And it's a great shooting gun, but there's nothing mm-hmm. special about it. Okay. And and I thought maybe there was something on about it that I maybe ought to look up because he's always been very honest with his pricing on these. And I just bought this really without even looking at it. And I'm just kind of having a little remorse, buyer's remorse here, basically. <laughs> well. It's one of those deals that, you know, that sounds like you made a real impulse buy uh, without doing any research into it. Obviously, there are a lot of really nice rifles out there for 350 bucks. So th- let me ask you, why did you pay 900 bucks for this? Well, as I said, he's always been pretty honest with me on the gun pricing. Well, the mm-hmm. reason why I did is because I thought it was my grandpa's old thirty out 6 a lot of his guns when he passed away and then one of the daughters passed. Anyways, my grandpa's guns have been scattered everywhere except for here. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to get some of them back. And and this might have been his, but I doubt it because my grandpa really only had some really fine guns. And okay. I've got a, an old three Remington I got from him that's just outstanding, you know, original and... And well, I got a, you know, I, anyway, I just got some really good guns, and I just, uh, I thought I probably did overpay for this one quite a bit. But well, not it, necessarily. I mean, Mausers are really nice rifles, and if you bought it from a place that usually has good, honest uh, gun prices, that's probably a market price for it. I guess the real question is, when you look at this rifle, you know, irrespective of the price, do you like the rifle? Does it look good? Does it feel good? Does it make you feel good when you pick it up? Uh, absolutely. I I love the way it shoots, mm-hmm. and I just I think a gra- you know the scope has been taken off of it, and so mm-hmm. I'm going to find a nice scope to replace it. But it feels great. Yeah, it's not too long. You know, I'm not a real big guy, but uh, mm-hmm. you know, so it's comfortable for me to shoot. And I have gotten some other good guns for from them in the past, so, and I've got and, pretty good and, bargains and on the it. And bol- the bolt on this one is smooth and slick and works like a Mauser should, huh? It, it does. It sure does. It, it's, it's uh, you know, if you pull it too far back, you know, you got to, you know, depress that little tongue to get the bolt to go back in there, but... Well, it sounds I, like you like the rifle, at which point, you know, the only, the only reason to worry about how much you paid for is if you're going to resell it, if you're going to hold on to it. But, uh, the money's already gone, so just enjoy the rifle. Well, okay. <laughs> well, I, yeah, that is true, and I appreciate that. And hopefully, my nephew will be getting all these, uh, or what? What I have, you know, I've got a few I bought for investments. But how I old is your nephew? Sixteen now. He's sixteen. When, you know, when, are, he, he, when do you plan to give him guns? Boy, I don't, I'm thinking another twenty years, really. I, so, I've uh, got. 
You, you are, you think, are you thinking of passing them on to him after you die? I am, or maybe even a little before then is what I'm thinking, yes. And well, if, yeah, because yeah, the trick there is uh, knowing when that's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a trick, Tom. That would be a <laughs> trick, would it not? Yeah. So, uh, uh, but, but seriously, you know what you ought to do? I'm, I don't like to tell people what they ought to do, but uh, I'm going to make an exception here. I think you ought to give him, he's 16, give him a gun now. And write him a letter, particularly if you can find one that has been in the family. And when you do, write him a letter that talks about the gun. I just came across a, a thing that my dad wrote me when he gave me his first gun. And it is like a half-page written thing. And it's a, just a little story about how he got it and everything else. And, you know, I wouldn't take any amount of money for that. And I, I you will have so much enjoyment Giving him a gun now, as opposed to thinking, well, he'll get those after I die. Well, then you don't get any joy out of that. No, none at all, actually. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a good point. You know, I might just do that. Uh, I've got quite a few waiting on him, actually, and sure mm -hmm. wouldn't hurt to get rid of one of, one of them. Now, I know he right. just loves. So. Yeah. Uh, Jim said one a year. I like that idea. You know, just kind of, you, you need to get him out of your place anyway, because it's just stuff that weighs you down, and he would love it, and you start the process, and you'll just get tons of enjoyment out of it. Give it to him, then take him out and, let, and go shooting with him. Boy, that's great advice, Tom. I appreciate that. Absolutely. I, I wish you luck with it. Thanks for the call. That's pretty cool. Very nice. Thanks, sir. Uh, Lenny, Lafayette, Louisiana on one. He's got a warning for me, I do believe. Hey, Lenny, talk to me. <laughs> hey, Tom. Well, I heard you talking about that fire extinguisher thing, which is something that I've already done in different places. But uh, years ago when I was actually doing training, legitimate training as a safety guy, we shut mm -hmm. up. We did a lot of loading of fire extinguishers on a lawn. Mm. And, of course, the stuff got all over the grass and everything. And little did I know, it's toxic to the grass. Ooh. And when DEQ came by the visit, they wanted to know what kind of stuff I was putting all over the grass. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, I would suggest you not uh, shoot oh. the fire extinguishers up in your backyard. That's Do it in the driveway or the street or someplace else. Somewhere you can hose it down or something. Or, or in a field someplace, yes. But don't do it in your backyard or your front yard. I did not even think about that. So the stuff in fire extinguishers is, will actually kill the grass. Well, this is the thing. There's several different things that are in them. Right. And most of them are basically salt. And, of course, you don't want to put salt on your grass. You know, mm, it's not mm -hmm, table mm -hmm. salt, but it's a right, salt. Right, right, right. And okay. uh, those things tend to be toxic and gra to grass if you have too much of it. And if you right. go shooting one or two fire extinguishers, <laughs> you may not have any grass left. Interesting. Well, that's good info. I did not know that. Thank you, Lenny. The other thing I would offer is that uh, don't do those in enclosed spaces because that stuff is not good to breathe. Uh, you know, if you, if you had to use them in a fire, you'd use them and then you'd get the heck out of Dodge. But uh, don't be messing around with fire extinguishers in closed places if you can at all help it, okay? 866-TALK-GUN. Here's my question for you. Throwing this out. If you had some mythical money from Tom, you had some gun talk dollars, $1,000, what gun or guns would you buy? What's on your shopping list right now? you got got 1000 bucks of free money. What's it going to be? Give me a holler. Just call me at Tom Talk Gun. For legendary Mossberg reliability in a compact package without the requirement of NFA paperwork, look for the Mossberg 590 Shockwave. Now available in both 12 and 20 gauge. These pump action firearms feature a 14 inch barrel, a bird's head pistol grip, and a length just over 26 inches. Check out the Shockwaves at Mossberg.com. Mossberg, American built, American strong. Arm yourself with Mossberg. If you carry a gun, you need training. Your concealed carry class was definitely not training. But time, money, and obligations keep you from spending days at a shooting school. The trusted folks at Gun Talk can help. Concealed Carry One, our DVD featuring the Vata Group, covers what gun, what holster, how to carry, where to wear your gun, and much more. 
visit shopguntalk.com. That's shopguntalk.com. Look, this really is life and death. Learn how to stay aware, how to get away, and how to fight if you must. At shopguntalk.com, you can get the two DVD set, including Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. No matter what gun you carry, this vital training info can save your life. Learn the draw, the stance, reloading, vital gear from Gun Talk. That's shopguntalk.com. Shopguntalk.com. Are you looking for a place to shoot? The National Shooting Sports Foundation has a great website called wheretoshoot.org. It's the largest database of shooting ranges on the Internet. It's also a great resource for shooters where you can find video tips, printable targets, and a lot more. Find it online at wheretoshoot.org. And while you're there, download their free iPhone app. That's wheretoshoot.org. Table is a thousand dollars of magical, mystical money. You got a thousand bucks, cash money. You got to go into a gun store. What you got to buy? Uh, looking for your thoughts on that. Let's see. Benny's got some thoughts. He's on four out of Christi, Corpus Christi, Texas. Hey, Benny, you got a thousand bucks. Where are you going? What you going to do? Hey, great afternoon, Tom. Really glad you're back in the house with the missus. That is such great news. Appreciate. Um, it. If I could, if I could take a thousand dollars of your money. I'm mm-hmm. going to add to it a couple of hundred bucks of my own, and I'm going to get the Ruger Precision Rifle in 6.5 Creedmoor. Oh. Because anytime you know you can get a twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 rifle for 200 bucks, maybe 300 <laughs> out of your own pocket, you're going to do it. <laughs> all right. So all right, do you already have a, a Ruger Precision Rifle in any other caliber? No, sir, I don't. You don't? But so what, what is I it sure about have, that I, rifle I, I, that's got you cranked up? Well, I've been drooling over the pictures. Um friend of mine, real close friend, like a brother, he is a SWAT team commander mm-hmm. um, in South Cook County, Illinois. And, yeah, he, he has il- illuminated me to the, uh, to the wondrous goodness of such a rifle because his buddies have them. And they, they are, are wonderful, really, I will tell you. They really are. They are really good. Yeah. I mean, for that price... You know, you're looking at a four thousand, five thousand dollar rifle elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, like I say, twelve hundred buck range. Uh, you can get a Ruger Precision rifle, uh, and you do yours in the Creedmoor. I think that's a smart choice. I like that. It's a little bit lower recoil than a three hundred eight. Uh, shoots flat as all get out. It's, People get right. confused. They think, well, it shoots fast. No, it doesn't. It's not really a fast cartridge. It shoots flat. It's flat. Uh, right. And it bucks the wind because you can use these really long bullets with high ballistic coefficients. That's the real secret there. Do they make that in a Spitzer bullet? See, my oh, wife's yeah. got a two forty three with the Spitzers, and you want to talk about flat shooting. Well, wow. I know, but, but, but I mean, what you can do is you can go to really long bullets, uh, and they make special, they call them VLDs or very low drag bullets, and they, right. uh, they'll drift – They'll reduce your wind drift by about half, which is phenomenal. Wow. Um, in terms of flat so shooting, yeah, they, they shoot flat, but, but you know, you can always dial uh, elevation up and down. It's the wind that really is the tricky part because you can't always tell what it's doing out there at 600, 1,200 yards. Oh, no. So you'd be, that would be pushing the ballistic coefficients up above 600 easily. Some of them are, yeah. Some of them are pushing 600, wow. which is just amazing, yeah. No, okay, well, so wow. you're spending my money. You're going to throw in a little of your own. You're going to get you an RPR in 6.5 Creedmoor. I love it. Yes. yes All sir. right, thanks, Benny. I appreciate that. we got Dave wants to uh, spend some of my money, too. He's in Little Rock on three. Hey, Dave, spend my money, baby. You there, Dave? Dave. I really like your choices. I wanted to do this. All right, put Dave back on hold. Let's go to the line one. Let's pick up Ken out of Medford, Oregon. Where are you going? Oh, he's got a range report. Hey, Ken. Hey, uh, I bought something that I never thought I'd ever own in my whole life. Yeah. Uh, it's a Smith & Wesson M&P AR-15 22 long rifle. How, okay, wait, wait, wait. Let me stop, let me stop you right here. Are you okay. still? Are you still smiling? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that not one of the most fun little rifles? 
I had no idea how much fun this thing would be to shoot. <laughs> you know, it looks like a silly thing. You think, oh, why would I get a twenty two that looks like an AR? And then you go shoot it and you go, oh, oh that's why? Yep. <laughs> I had no use for a two two three or a five five six because I have forty fours, thirty thirties, two seventies, thirty odd sixes. But I have some twenty twos that I have a lot of fun with. And the whole AR thing, when I picked this thing up, it was like, wow, this is cool. It's got all these really neat functions and operations, and it's a twenty two. Okay, so and twenty two rim fire. For, for those who don't know, it's a, basically it, it looks like an AR-15, but it's not like a fake AR-15. You could swap out the trigger group from an AR-15 and drop it into this rifle, so that tells you how true to form it actually is. But you know what impressed me the most about it? Or, well, no, I won't say that. The thing that surprised me the most about it, was the first time I picked it up, was how light it was. Yes. It just doesn't I weigh anything. I have a friend that has an Armalite, and, and it's... No, it, it's it's a rifle. It's heavy. Yeah. This thing is like amazing. Um, and what's the first thing I did is I went out and bought a bunch of Magpul accessories for it. <laughs> <laughs> Not leaving well enough alone, of course. Oh, obviously. Yeah, right. Um, of course. But everything fit. Um, it it you can put almost any AR accessory onto it. I have a, a True Glow red dot for it. Mm-hmm. I have this other, I don't even remember the name of the company, but it has this little flashlight with a laser underneath it mm. that I put on the front. Yep. Um, and then I put the Magpul sights that fit me, that sight through the you, true glow. You really did and go off the I deep end. Just a good thing on the front. <laughs> and it oh, is just gosh. the bomb. Yeah, and then I, on top of that, uh-huh. when I showed it to my daughter, yes. she says, I get this when you die, right? <laughs> you know what? Just just for your own health, you might want to get her her own. Well, you know, when you were talking about what would you buy with Tom's thousand dollars, uh huh, I'd, I'd get one of these for my daughter so I could keep mine. Well, and the other thing is, I don't know if you know this, but they come in different colors. Yes, I found that out that they got all kinds of yep. uh, and they're, camo. They're pretty and, nice. They got camo. They got kind of a purple one. They got kind of an orange one, and different. And you know, with the uh, adjustable stock. It's a great uh, rifle for kids. Well, my granddaughter, when, when she saw it, she picked it up and she said, well, it's kind of weird. And I slid the stock forward and she said, okay, this is mine. I said, no, yep. it's not. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. And that's and the thing is, you could probably get close to three of those for the thousand bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now we're, now we're talking. Hey, that is a great range of port, friend. I really appreciate that. That is very cool. I'm glad you got that. Uh, the Smith & Wesson m p 22 rifle. Ken, thank you so much. Tony is in Missouri on two. Hey, Tony, what you doing with my money, man? Well, I couldn't help, I couldn't help but call when, uh, when you offered it or threw it out there. <laughs> yeah. I've had my, my eyes and mind on a 1911 for some time, and I, just kind of slowly and putting funds away for. I have several 1911s, but mm-hmm. I shot that. My uh, father-in-law has a couple of uh, Wilson combats that uh, right. are really sweet shooters, and uh, I just got, you know. Yeah. So it's a 1911. So you're going to go high end. You're going to basically use the uh, the thousand bucks to get you what halfway, a third of the way toward a Wilson or maybe a Ned Brown. Yeah, the Ed Brown's the one I have. Okay. Yeah, your your phone's dropping out on me. I'm sorry, but it sounds like you got an Ed Brown already lined up. Yeah, and those are going to be uh, probably in the three grand range. But at least I got you a thousand dollars closer to it. There you go. Hey, let's see. Yes, we have time. We're going to get uh, Darren in here on four out of Waco, spending Tom's money. Darren, what you going <laughs> to do with that thousand bucks? Uh, come next Friday, my day off. I'm going to drive up Fort Worth and buy me a Sig P220 Hunter with the Cryptek camo and ten millimeter. Really? Oh yeah, I'm going to do that with your thousand or mine, either one. But they're. <laughs> Thirteen ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> I've already committed. Shot, I'm doing it. <laughs> have you shot one of those guns? I have not, but I've done a lot of reading. You are going to like it so much. The trigger I on that is awesome. I hunt with a model 57, 41 Magnum, shoot mm. 45s. Just love the gun, everything I've read about it. How long have you had your model 57? Oh, my gosh. Uh, 
15, 20 years. Mm. I, do, I, I shoot all reloads. That's all I do is load my own. What, what barrel length? Uh, six inch. That's what I have. I've got one of those. Now, I, the other thing is I got mine when I was about, oh, I don't know, 16 or 17. It was dad's, and I ended up with it. But I was shooting it when I was 16 or 17, so that makes it at least uh, 12 years old at this point. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I love that gun, and I love to hunt pigs with it, but oh. I sure would like the semi-auto, and the 10 millimeter is the one to have. You're going to love it. It shoots really well. You know, the other thing that's nice, the 10-millimeter, there are loads out there that are pretty mild. I was going to say anemic, but that's pejorative. I don't want to say that. They're they're mild, but then you can get, like, some hot loads that will shoot through a pig, and that's what you're looking for when you're hunting. Uh, but that's a 5-inch bar- barrel, and it's a heavy enough gun that the recoil is hardly noticeable. You're going to love it. I'll tell you what I want you to do. After you get it, Call us back after you shot it and give us a full-blown rage report on it, okay? That's always been my intent. Well, super. I mean, I love it. I have one of those, obviously. we uh, That was one of our Gun Talk guns we issued a few years ago. So uh, when that gun first came out, we put one of those out as a Gun Talk special. So that that's cool. Appreciate the call, sir, and I wish you luck. I wish I, I could send you my money, but it sounds like you already got yours lined up. So we'll look for that range report. 10-millimeter semi-auto. Pretty hard to turn those down. Those are getting to be real popular now. We've got several different manufacturers have brought out uh, 10 millimeters in the last 12 months. Uh, kind of equivalent of a 41 Magnum, not quite, but almost. I have both. I like them all. Why not? I like them all anyway, right? <laughs> what would you do if you had a thousand dollars of my money to go spend? Guns, ammo, optics. What are you going to buy? with a thousand simoleons just burning a hole in your pocket. 866-TALK-GUN. Sign up for our Gun Talk newsletter and join the Truth Squad at www.guntalk.com. Now, back to Gun Talk with Washington Times opinion page regular contributor Tom Gresham. Well, here's some good news. You uh, have heard the news. We've talked about this over the last, I don't know, seven, eight years. Under the Obama administration, particularly, the Veterans Affairs Department were stripping tens of thousands of veterans of their gun rights. What they would do is if they assigned a fiduciary to help a veteran manage his or her benefit payments, the VA would then report that veteran's name to the National Criminal Instant Background Check System, the NICS system, commonly known as the National Gun Ban List. Once on the list, the veteran was outlawed from owning or possessing firearms. No, they've got to get rid of them. can't own them, resulting in a lot of veterans who were safe to own guns, being denied their constitutional rights. Okay, so now, just happened, Senate Judici- Judiciary Chairman Chuck Grassley from Iowa, uh, along with Joni Ernst, Republican from Iowa, Senator uh, Joni Ernst, and Senator Joe Manchin, a Democrat from West Virginia, they introduced uh, a bill to restore the rights for veterans. Uh, citing the improper application of existing regulations to servicemen and women is not only unfair but arguably unconstitutional, according to Grassley. That is an excellent thing, and I'm hoping that we'll get in there. It'll move quickly. Let's uh, do all we can. I'll keep you posted as we get more information on that. Our number is 866-TALK-GUN. We're playing uh, a little game here. If you had a 1000 bucks of Tom's money to spend, what would you spend it on? Let's see. Chris has got a thought on that. He's on three out of Little Rock, Arkansas. Hey, Chris, how are you going to spend hey, that money? Tom. Hey, great, great show. Uh, playing with your money yeah. and the inside of you are, I think you can get three guns. Ooh. GSG, German sports gun, the 1911 and the 22 caliber on government frame. Uh-huh. Then their, uh, their MP5 rep, uh, model and the... Uh, Recently, uh, the Stormgewehr STG 44, into all in 22 caliber. You could get all of those for a thousand dollars. I think with you being inside, you probably could. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will tell you honestly, 
uh, there are times when they say, well, yeah, this is the special price. And when we get a gun in, yeah, we've got to send them all back. And sometimes we'll say, well, what's it cost if we want to keep it? And they'll tell us, and we go, well, I can go buy it cheaper over the store. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's the weirdest thing. You go, okay. Uh, so sometimes the uh, the special price is not really special at all, but that's okay. But cool. I like the idea. Buy a threefer. Very good. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Eric is uh, on two out of Junction City, Kansas, spending my money. Eric, where are you going with this 1000 bucks? Remington 260 suppressed, and if there's money left over, bought a mem- metal for a 98 Mauser. Uh, 264 wind mag. I already mm-hmm. have the rest of it. I just need the bottom metal. Do you do you already have a suppressor? Or would you have to get one of those? I'd have to get one of those. Okay. So, so w- which Remington are you going to get? The 260 caliber. The oh, okay. What rifle? I hadn't researched that far yet. Are you thinking AR or bolt gun? Bolt. Bolt gun. Okay. Bolt action. In 260 Remington, suppressed. I like I like all of this so far. And then if you got any left over, you're going to get some bottom metal to uh, fix everything else up. I, I, I like that. Do you own a 260 as it is now? Uh, my brother owns a 260. I have my dad's 264 wind mag. Ah, nice. So why, you know, and of course, you know, the 260 Remington and the 6.5 Creedmoor are ballistic twins. Why would you choose the 260? My brother's already got dies. <laughs> Brilliant. I love it. <laughs> Very good. I, I like all of that. Thank you, sir. You take care. Hey, Mike's in uh, Texas on one, spending $1,000 of mythical gun talk money. What you going to buy? Well, I tell you what, time had it. If you wanted to buy a Heckler & Coke, say, uh, 45 uh, you'd sp- spend well over a thousand dollars, say twelve hundred bucks. Now Heckler and Coke has just slashed their prices uh, in the United States, so you can actually buy a Heckler and Coke forty-five for six hundred bucks, and then have plenty of money left over for ammo. That said, I would really like Heckler and Coke, Coke to drop their prices on their MR five five six seven six two and their SP five K, but I can only hope. <laughs> yeah, but boy, that's a quite the price drop, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, they found economies of scale uh, with their new plant in Georgia, mm-hmm. and uh, their statement to the public was, we're passing along uh, the savings to uh, to our customers. And so a big shout-out to Heckler & Coke for doing uh, doing that great thing for uh, for the consumer. Absolutely. That is terrific. I mean, we're talking about like half price. That's, that's awesome. I appreciate that, sir. Tell you what, let's take a quick break while uh, you make your shopping list. you got $1,000 of my money to spend. Mythical, of course. What are you going to buy? Pistol? Rifle? Shotgun? Never heard, haven't heard anybody mention shotguns. So, uh, but anyway, just getting our, we're having some fun with this thing. I got a thought or two I might share. 866 Talk Gun. Be right back. It's the next generation target pistol, the SW22 Victory from Smith & Wesson. Stainless steel frame, interchangeable match barrel, thumb safety, fiber optic sights, and a Picatinny rail. The SW22 Victory is ready for anything, targets or small game. Also available with a threaded barrel or cryptic camo finish. And it's backed by the Smith & Wesson Lifetime Service Policy. Learn more about the SW22 Victory at smith-wesson.com. Hi, this is Tom Gresham from Gun Talk. America is losing critical wildlife habitat at a rate of one football field every hour. It's happening on the Louisiana coast, but it's critical to all sportsmen and conservationists. These precious wetlands provide winter habitat for more than 10 million ducks and geese annually. Waterfowl that migrate north through dozens of states. Don't shrug it off. Get involved. You can help. Visit vanishingparadise.org. Attacks happen every day. How will you react? See real people put into real-life criminal attack situations on First Person Defender. Discover what works and what doesn't. Kidnapping, ATM robbery, home invasion, and other attacks. Learn how to save your life and the lives of your family. Get the entire first season on DVD at ShopGunTalk.com. Get prepared. ShopGunTalk.com. 
For more than 70 years, Timney Triggers has been enhancing the shooter's experience. Whether it's a local competition, a day at the range, or even the hunt of a lifetime, setting the standard in aftermarket triggers, Timney is now producing more than 170 models of triggers for bolt-action rifles, shotguns, AR rifles, and semi-automatic rifles. Proudly made in the USA since 1946. Find your new trigger at TimneyTriggers.com. We, uh, we're just having fun today. We're saying if you had $1,000, just cash money, and you have to spend it on guns, a gun, more than one gun, or gun-related gear, what would you what would you buy? What, what's basically on your shopping list? Some folks have said, well, I'd start with that, and I'd add some to it and get something. Okay, that's fair. So just let me know. Joe's in uh, Tulsa on line four. Hey, Joe, what would you be spending this on? Hey, Tom. I want a Henry Lever gun trapper model, 16-inch barrel with 357 chambering so I can shoot Lever Revolution bullets from Hornady. I love uh, those. Th- those are amazing, aren't they? They are flat. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, a, it's a great bullet. And I, I love that. the short barrel so yeah. that you can walk through the woods with it. and It's a great stomping gun That's what it is. You know... I'm thinking with 357 Magnum, with those bullets, you're probably stretching. I mean, normally you'd say that's a 75 yard deer gun with regular bullets, but I think you're probably stretching that to 125, could even be 150 yards. You're saying exactly what I what I believe, and I've actually had some experience shooting these out of uh, another uh, lever gun that I don't want to badmouth. I just like the Henry. Mm-hmm. It's American made. It's yep. a beautiful gun. I, uh, uh, I've had a chance to shoot that Lever Evolution ammo in a, a 444 Marlin, and believe it or not, we are hitting milk jugs at 300 yards with the lever gun. Wow. I know. It, that was my reaction, too. I went, you got to be kidding me. I said, no, that, they shoot that well. Yeah. Well, the, the ballistic coefficient of that bullet is excellent. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's very cool. I like that. Uh, buy a Henry uh, repeating in a Trapper model and three fifty seven. That way you could also shoot the uh, lower recoil and less expensive thirty eight for fun. Hey, good choice. Joe's in Shreveport spending my money. He's on three. Hey, Joe, what you buying? Hey, Tom, without question, I would buy training. Ah, uh, which kind? Yeah, so, now that's the hard question because I need everything. I'm, you know, I've always wanted to take a defensive <laughs> shotgun course, but yeah. man, I love shooting the pistol, and so, and I always need more carbine work. So, I don't know. That'd be the hard part. Well, what have you had so far? I've had several pistol courses, mm-hmm. and actually, I'm going to take another one in the spring. I'm going to go uh, over to. Frank Proctor's course, Way of the Gun, in Alabama. I'm look, I've mm-hmm. heard good things about him. I'm looking forward to training under him. Well, you know, you're just uh, up the road from uh, Nacogdoches, Texas. You can get down there and uh, do some training there at, uh, I think it's CSAT. And, I've done uh, that. You have? I've okay. Done, yeah. Good school? You like that place? Uh, good school. Can't Paul go Howell? wrong with Paul Howe. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, I mean, in every way, you know, uh, knowledge, uh, gentlemanly professional, you just, you know, nothing wrong at all. Well, I'm going to suggest, because I know how much fun you would have doing it, Get go to a defensive shotgun class. It is just a hoot and a half. It's serious stuff, but it's also fun. I find you a good place, and uh, I, I would try to make that my next class if I were you. Thanks so much. All right, appreciate it. Great idea. Chris is uh, somewhere in North Dakota on line two. Hey, Chris, what you looking for here? Hey, Tom. Uh, so I bought a uh, Savage Model 74 Bolt Action 3030 for mm-hmm. my oldest son for his first deer rifle. Okay. And I got it super cheap at a gun show. The only thing is that it's missing the ejector. So the spring, mm-hmm. the lever, the, the holding pin, everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, where would be the best place to go? I've search the internet a uh, hundred mm-hmm. different sites and I can't find exactly what I'm looking for. There's like 
two different ones I could use yep. for that thirty thirty. Well, and I, okay. I'm not exactly sure which one I should be getting. I'm going to tell you who to call if you haven't done. Have you called not online, but call the folks at Brownells? At Brownells. Yeah, Brownells. Uh, because and ask to speak to one of their techs. They've got like a dozen guys in the back who are technical wizards, uh, gunsmiths. And if they don't have it, although Brownells does sell parts, so they may have it. But if they don't, these guys are going to know, have a pretty good idea of where to go for it because that's the business they're in. That's what they do all day, every day. And uh, just give them a holler. That, you know, the number's on their website if you need that. So uh, just go to Brownells, B-R-O-W-N-E-L-L-S, brownells.com, and uh, give them a call and ask to speak to one of their techs, and I bet these guys can help you out, Okay. Okay, thank you much. And then, hey, uh, by the I way, also got you had a range report. report. Yeah, what, what'd you, yeah, you got a what? I, I just got a P, six-hour P320 in the carry size, okay. and you know, which is halfway between the compact and the full size, mm-hmm. and I absolutely love it. Why? What, what is it about that you like? Well, it, first thing, I got big old gorilla mitts for hands mm-hmm. and it just it, it folds right into my hands it just melts in feels like a part of my arm from the second i picked it up mm-hmm. and i took it out put about uh, 50 rounds through it uh the day after i got it and i was like the first eight nine shots were in a sub three inch group at 20 yards oh. with it and then the last half of the magazine was in about a six-inch group at 20 yards. And I'm like, at, at 20 yards, I got my new concealed carry. If I'm shooting that well, right out of the box, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm good. Now, I mean, and you know the drill. You need to run two or 300 rounds through it just to break it in and to get reliability before you carry it. Oh, yep, yep. I'm, I'm working on it. I just, that's all the ammo I had on me at, at that time. So uh, hopefully uh, when I get back home here tonight, I'm going to go and Pick up a couple more boxes or I'll just take it in yet. Excellent. Way to go. Nice job. I, I like and I appreciate that range report. Thank you, sir. Let's see. Looking at it, yeah, we can do this. Uh, Jeff is in Navarre, Florida, line four. Jeff, got a question for me. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm well. Uh, okay. Uh, my question to you is, you know, I, I just listened to your the commercial break and the advertisement about the uh, Louisiana wetlands and everything. Mm. Mm-hmm. And you have you've had this uh, advertisement forever, and I know you support it. Um, I live in Navarre, Florida, but I own property in Dulac. Okay. Okay, at Terrebonne Parish, and my wife's family, lots of them are there originally from coquetry and everything. Yep, no, and I don't you. think people, un- I don't think people understand what you're, or at least the way that the advertisement goes, they don't realize that the Gulf is encroaching and taking over the land. The, uh, let me explain. I'll do it real fast. There are places you can go and sit in a boat where you cannot see land that 50 years ago you would be standing on land. That's how much land has been lost. We're losing a football field every hour of dirt. It's gone. The coastline keeps receding further and further, 10 miles, 15 miles in. As a result, we're losing the wetlands, we're losing the estuaries, we're losing protection from hurricanes, and we're losing, for migratory waterfowl, one of the areas that's very key for waterfowl to migrate all the way from Canada down to Louisiana and back. It's uh, an environmental disaster, and it's entirely man-made, and I put it squarely at the feet of the Corps of Engineers. If I had an hour and a drink, I could explain it to you really well. 866-TALK-GUN. Back with you, line one, Dallas in southeast Michigan. Hey, Dallas. Hi, 60 Minutes is uh, promoing something or other on uh, what sounds like carry reciprocity for tonight's show. I thought I'd uh, bring it up so everybody could watch. Yeah, it's 60 Minutes. They are Basically, they are incapable of telling the truth. 
in my experience. Uh, if it's about guns, it will be a hit piece on guns, and it will be a hit piece about people who carry concealed. And they may have somebody from our side on, but then they will just smash them and slam them, and they'll end up with uh, the anti-gun folks as being the quote-unquote experts. Haven't seen it, and I could be completely wrong, but it's very unlikely that I am. Okay, thank you. All right, appreciate it. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's fine. They're going to do this thing. I, I mean, I, honestly, I stopped watching 60 Minutes 30 years ago. Just time and time and time again, uh, they're just dishonest about what they say and what they show. They start off with a storyline, and then they go find the pieces they need to build the storyline. Not like, what are we going to find when we go there? It's no, we're going to do a piece on reciprocity and how it's going to negate states' rights, and it's going to be dangerous, and people who have no training will be able to go into New York and carry guns, and it's going to be the same old BS that we hear from the uh, Bloomberg gun grabbers all the time. It's what 60 Minutes does. And anytime you see a story and it's about a subject that you actually know something about, you go, well, that's not right. And then you stop and think, well, what? What about all those stories they do on subjects where I don't really know the subject? They've got to be doing the same thing on those. And yes, of course they do. So, yeah. Um, why does anybody watch 60 Minutes? It actually is, you know, it's an agenda-driven show. It, it's an entertainment show. So, I mean, yeah, okay. It would be worthwhile to record it, perhaps, and watch it. You can speed through things. But understand that you know, they'll go record a uh, two-hour interview with somebody, and then they're going to pull a 10-second clip out of it saying what it is they hoped to get them to say when they went into the interview. Again, it's not a story about what people are saying. It's a, a story that they want to build. It's a narrative they want to present. It's an advocacy piece that they would like to put out there about how concealed carry is bad. I, I'm just saying it would be shocking and startling if this were not the case. It never has been in the past. So I don't think anything's going to be different here. Uh, and just what they will do is they will build that storyline. And they're good at it. Don't give them props for that. They know how to build propaganda. They will build that storyline, and they will end up with, uh, oh, God, they're probably, here's how you will know it is a hit piece. Is if they bring in the Violence Policy Center and their bogus, quote-unquote, studies of concealed carry killers. We have, what, 15 million people licensed to carry now? And they commit crimes at a rate actually lower than police officers do. Florida did a study. They said that people with carry permits commit crimes at a rate one-tenth of that. No, correction, one percent of that of the general public. So the general public is 100 times more likely to commit a crime than somebody who has a concealed carry permit who can carry a gun loaded among the public. So, yeah, record the piece. See what you think. Uh, We can talk about it uh, after we've all seen it. Uh, I have no hopes it will be fair. It will pretend to be fair, I think. That's what they generally do, past experience out there. All right. So, you know what? If you'd like to join us for the after show, give me a call right now. 866-TALK-GUN. We're still going to continue on the, if you had $1,000 of Tom's money to buy a gun, what would it be? Give me a holler. 866-TALK-GUN. I'm Tom Gresham. Get out there, do some shooting, have some fun. Hey, watch your six. Six. 